A president and patriot, a father and grandfather, Texas royalty, George Herbert Walker Bush, the body of our 41st president now lying in state in the U.S. Capitol. Right now you are looking at a picture of people at the ceremony welcoming Mr. Bush back to Washington, D.C. for a final time. You see them paying their respects. That ceremony ended just moments ago. He will return to the home he chose, Texas, for burial. His adopted hometown, Houston, celebrating his extraordinary life tonight. We do want to welcome you to News 8 at 5 o'clock. I'm Marisa Major here in our Victory Park studios. I'm John McKay, live tonight in Washington. Thank you for joining us tonight. You have been watching, of course, this, this very special uh, pro program coming from ABC tonight, uh, from behind me at the National Capitol, of course, where all of the national leaders have been gathering to pay their respects for former President George H.W. Bush. I want to I wanna start off by taking you back inside, give you some idea of what's been going on even now, because even though the live program may have ended for in terms of ABC, they're still are some people inside sharing information, sharing different events. Now, he will be lying in state here until Wednesday, we're told. No, of the, none of the public had been invited until 7.30 tonight. That will continue from 7.30 tonight, the public being allowed to come in and share their, their, show their respect until Wednesday. Now, I want to also show you what happened when they first arrived. We've been here all oh, maybe the, the last 90 minutes waiting for the family to get here, former President George W. Bush, of course, leading the family. This is a very difficult time, as you might imagine, for a son so very close to his father. Remember last week, they shared those final words in which he talked about how much he loved his father, how great he was, and how former President George H.W. Bush told him he loved him. Inside in the service, of course, American. many people were gathered. They had a chance, the family, to talk and to share and to talk with all of their friends about uh, the president that we have just lost. And we heard some very special tributes, very special moments coming from people such as House Speaker Paul Ryan, who had an emotional and touching speech about the former president. There are all these images we have of him as a devoted husband. That twinkle in his eye that Barbara always brought out especially in those big, huge family photos you all had in Kenny Bunkport. This one I, I will never forget. There was that image of him as a loving father reaching out to hold his son's hand at the National Cathedral after 9-11. In consequential times, George Herbert Walker Bush demonstrated the finest qualities of our nation and of humankind a great leader and a good man. That's the Speaker of the House, uh, Paul Ryan, speaking tonight. Our senior political reporter, Jason Whiteley, joins me tonight. Uh, you had a chance to talk to some of our, our, our local leadership who work here in Washington, Pete Sessions in particular, who had a very special relationship uh, with the former president. Indeed he did, John. You know, Congressman Sessions is uh, outgoing now. We went inside the Capitol about 90 minutes ago, two hours ago, just before the motorcade arrived here and spoke with uh, Congressman Sessions inside the actual Capitol building here, talking about... Uh, the late President Bush. One interesting thing about this is uh, Congressman Sessions' father is the former director of the FBI, William S. Sessions, who was appointed by President Reagan. He served under President George H.W. Bush uh, until the Clinton administration as well, too. One of the things that stuck with me that Congressman Sessions mentioned is that President Bush is a man's man. Yeah. That's what we've heard so much about how gentle, how kind he was, and that's even what we heard from Congressman Sessions as well, too. I want to point out one thing inside. You guys have seen the, the pictures inside of the uh, casket of President Bush sitting in the middle of the rotunda there. It is sitting on a piece of U.S. history. I'm not sure if we've discussed this yet or not, John. It's actually sitting on a uh, wooden, pine wooden pedestal, the very same pedestal that shows, uh, that, that held the uh, casket of President Lincoln 153 years ago. It is that very same pedestal that has been used every time there has been a state funeral like this. It is no different here tonight in Washington, D.C. The same pedestal is being used for President Bush. He will lie in state here, as you mentioned, John, until um, Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday morning, about 7.45 uh, Dallas time. 
And in the next hour and a half here, there's lines of people. Yeah, we can see them gathering. Over here near us, dozens of people waiting to get inside to pay their respects. And among them, world leaders and a lot of local folks, including some Texans, we hope to meet in a little while, John. Yeah, we do. Thanks a lot, Joe. Right. Appreciate that. Uh, of course, Washington, D.C. absolutely loves the, the former president, but Texans have a special relationship with him. As a matter of fact, Houston has a very special relationship with him. Our Kevin Reese is live tonight for a celebration of life that's going on right now. They're live. Kevin. Yes, as the national observances begin there in Washington, D.C., the city of Houston will gather here in front of Houston City Hall to celebrate one very remarkable life. Much of the stage was already in stage. Actually, what you can hear right now is one of the performers here will be Larry Gatlin uh, singing one of his standards, which is Houston. Uh, they will be part of the performance tonight. But let's tell you more about what is happening here. They are honoring Mr. and Mrs. Bush for their 50 years that they have spent here in Houston. He is easily the city's most famous, most revered adopted son, war hero, oil, wildcatter, politician, UN ambassador, CIA director, vice president, and president. A life very much worth celebrating and that's what they plan to do tonight. There are already people sitting and waiting in the front row as they are going through sound checks right now. We talked to some of those people about why they are here and why they need to be here to celebrate the life of George H.W. Bush. He was there for his wife and she was there for him. And now we could say, you know, we thank God he's, he's with his beloved like he always wanted to and with his sweet daughter, you know. And I'm just happy to be here and be in front row and wear some of the color socks. And that is exactly what they have asked people to do, to wear the same kind of colorful socks that the president was known to wear all the time. Again, sound checks right now with Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin brothers singing Houston, a fitting song tonight for the celebration of life of President George H.W. Bush. It will begin at 7 o'clock tonight. We will have those sights and sounds for you as the night goes on. Live in Houston, I'm Kevin Reese. Now back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. Appreciate that report. Uh, again, here in Washington, want to give you the, the, the update on the schedule for the events surrounding the funeral for former President George H.W. Bush. Of course, he will be here until Wednesday, here behind me in the Capitol. And then, of course, on Wednesday, there'll be a service at the National Cathedral. And then they will leave and return to Texas, where he will lie and repose in Texas. And then, of course, on Thursday, there will be burial at College Station, of course, the home of the, the, the Bush Library at Texas A&M University. Uh, but, Marie, right now, a very special moment that we've all had. We've seen several people gathered, faces that I think many of us haven't seen for years, but all people paying their respects to a former president who, uh, in life, in, rather in death, has been admired really by all. Certainly special to watch. Thank you so much, John. A presidential train will be carrying President Bush's body to College Station on Thursday for burial. And if you would like to pay tribute and get a glimpse of history, you can line up along the train tracks. Here is that route. The train departs spring at 1 p.m. on Thursday. The whole route is about 70 miles long. The trip should take about two and a half hours. We will have complete coverage of all this week's events on air and on social media so you can see it all live. Just be sure to follow WFAA.